Hi, I'm John, and I'm the Astro Chat. It's galaxy season, and the Whirlpool Galaxy is one of my favourite targets. So I've decided to capture it again, and this time I've done so using my new mono camera, the ASI 2600mm Pro. Every image I see of the Whirlpool Galaxy really captivates my attention. It's such a beautiful looking galaxy and it's such an iconic part of the night sky. So this year I wanted to capture it for the second time. I've done it once before in RGB um, or one shot colour. And this year I wanted to try something a bit different and use the mono camera that I've just purchased, the SI 2600mm Pro, to capture it in HA RGB to try and bring out those hydrogen alpha areas and really make them pop. So with that being the case, I decided I was going to put the telescope out and give it a go. to get a full night's worth of data and it's just about I think it's five or six hours in total but I'll put the exact number on the screen. Now once I'd done this project I was actually outside doing some gardening and a snail caught my attention and I was thinking a lot about spirals. So the shell of a snail has a spiral in it and it's a pretty perfect structure really if you think about it and on such a small scale and then throughout our universe we have different images or different representations of spirals coming about throughout all different scales of uh, structures. So from something as small as a snail, or even smaller, all the way up to some of the largest known structures in our universe being galaxies. They all follow a very similar pattern, and then you have everything in between. So if you think about how water drains, um, if, if you think of tornadoes or hurricanes when they spiral, if you think of spiral staircases and the way we build a lot of things, this pattern is such a repeating pattern throughout nature. It's pretty incredible, really, that plants and flowers and, and animals all use the same structure. Anyway, it just got me thinking and I, it, it kind of blew my mind. So I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole doing some research on it and trying to understand the reasons why and how and the consistency of the, the spiral itself. Um, and it is a real rabbit hole, um, so I'll let you explore that for yourself. Um, but one of the things that I found interesting was the logarithmic spiral and like the golden ratio um, for spirals, so often following the Fibonacci sequence. And the galaxies are often no different, they follow that logarithmic uh, spiral type shape. Um, so whether it's Bode's galaxies I've got here, or whether it's the Whirlpool galaxy that I've captured, they all follow a similar kind of pattern. Um, but just a random side thought, but I thought it was kind of interesting and it's, it's really made me think about scales of the universe and how patterns repeat themselves. So pretty incredible, really. Anyway, with that, let's, uh, let's jump into what I've actually captured. So we'll jump across onto the computer and I will take you through some of the subs that I've managed to capture. So what I've done is I've stacked all the data together. I've actually already processed all the imagery. So I can show you the individual H, A, R, G, and B. Uh, stacks that I've created and then I can show you the resulting image. Okay, so let's get started. So what I've done is I've got HA, R, G and B. So these are just the stacks of the individual subs and then I've gone through and processed them. So I'll talk through the processing a little bit in a second. So starting with HA, if we expand this and make it a lot bigger. So this is HA, which as expected doesn't have a huge amount here, but what you can see, which is kind of nice, is there's a decent amount of like there's a decent amount of detail in the spiral arms um, coming through. So that's kind of what I expected. I expected it to be somewhat patching, but these will 
actually make the image pop when I blend it all together. Um, and in terms of the stars, they actually look pretty good as well. So um, they, yeah, like even going out to the corners, there's a little bit of, Actually, you know, they look all right. Yeah, they look not too bad for this telescope. So that's HA. We've got R. Oops, let's just close this one out. Um, so this is R. So this is pretty nice. I uh, managed to pick up a lot of detail house here. So these are these are 180 uh, second subs. Um, but there's actually a really Good amount of detail coming through in this. I'm really quite happy with that. So even in the spiral arms, you can really make out the dust lanes, um, and it's quite a clean image. Um, the stars are nice and round, which is good, and that's really come out pretty nicely as far as I'm concerned. So that's red, and then it's a similar situation for green and blue. But we'll just quickly go through these. So this is green again. A nice amount of detail being picked up. The stars are pretty good. There were a few artifacts, stacking artifacts that came through. So you can see like there's a satellite trail here, all the remnants of one. There's one here as well. And then just across here. But that's it's honestly just down to the limited amount of data I managed to get. So I think in total there's five five or six hours worth of data. Um, which when you break it down across the four subs is like one and a bit hours. Uh, sorry, across the different filters, it's about one and a bit hours per filter, uh, which really isn't as much as I would like, but that's the best I could do in a single night. And then the last one obviously is B. So we've got H A R G B. Expand this. And again, like you can sort of see already there's a couple of satellite trails coming through, but nothing too crazy. Um the galaxy itself has really come out quite nicely, I think, overall. It's it, I mean it's picked up a decent amount of detail and once I combined all of these together, actually, I was really quite pleased. Um, so, obviously, my telescope is not the greatest in terms of focal length, so I've already cropped this in. Um, the The actual focal length of my telescope with the focal reducer, so I've got a 0.8 reducer on it, uh, brings it down to about 450 millimeters, um, and this is a stretch. So, getting the Whirlpool Galaxy with that telescope is really kind of pushing the limits of what it's capable of, um, especially to pull out any fine grained detail. So anything that's smaller than this, I tend to avoid. Um, but I love this target. It, like I say, it captivates me every time I see it. So I, I did want to try and image it again with the new camera. So that's what I managed to capture in terms of the individual filters and the stacks. Obviously, I put this all together and I processed it and I followed Sarah Matthews video or a variation on it where I dipped in and out of some of the tools and techniques she was using um, to process a R HA RGB galaxy image. So if you haven't seen that video, I'd highly recommend it and check it out. It's, it's really, really helpful. Um, and she goes through it in such a good level of detail. It's very easy to follow along. And it certainly helped me particularly coming to mono for the first time it was something i was a little bit nervous about and i haven't actually got much experience with so that was a good guide and then i was able to lean on some of the experience that i've had in the past with processing uh, one-shot color camera images so i'll include the link to that in the description and strongly recommend that you check that out because it's really really good um, other than that in the next video what i'm going to do is i'm working on a bigger project so i want to capture a image across multiple nights and get somewhere between sort of 10 to 20 hours worth of data uh, and i want to try and do it using the sho filters so sulfur hydrogen oxygen filters that i've got which aside from just doing a test image on as an individual star to make sure that i didn't have any halo or that i hadn't put the filters in the wrong way around i haven't actually had a chance to do so it will be a, a nebula image, um, which is not the best time of year for it, but I can just about uh, get something from my garden. Um, and over the next few nights, I've actually got three hopefully clear nights, assuming the weather doesn't change, uh, of imaging where I should be able to use one per filter. And um, I will put the video together that takes you through that and share all the details with you. So if you're interested in that, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so that you get the notifications when that comes out. 
If you've enjoyed this video, then please consider giving it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I'm going to leave you with the final image of the World Court Galaxy that I've managed to capture, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.